In this exercise, you will investigate diffusion across a membrane. A glucose starch solution will be placed in dialysis tubing and submerged in a solution of starch indicator called IKI indicator. Then the solution in the tubing and the solution outside of the tubing will be tested with sugar indicator called Benedict's reagent. Conclusions will be drawn about which substances diffuse into or out of the dialysis tubing. Caution. Chemicals used in this exercise may cause permanent staining of clothes and work surfaces. Wear safety goggles and gloves at all times. Locate two short, clear plastic cups provided in your kit. Use a felt tip marker or wax marking pencil to label the cups, one and two. Use a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder to add exactly 150 milliliters of distilled water to cup one. The dialysis tubing is provided in your lab bridge solutions box. The tubing is clear, nearly invisible, and packaged within a sealable plastic bag. Take care when opening the sealable plastic bag so as not to damage the dialysis tubing. It will act as a membrane in this exercise. Place the dialysis tubing in the distilled water in cup one. Allow the tubing to soak for at least five minutes or until the tubing becomes soft and pliable. Use the short stem pipette labeled DW to add four milliliters of distilled water to a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. Add two milliliters of starch solution directly from the dropper bottle to the graduated cylinder. Keep the tip of the dropper bottle clear of the rim of the graduated cylinder to avoid contamination. The final volume for this step is six milliliters. Add two milliliters of 20% glucose solution directly from the dropper bottle to the graduated cylinder. The final volume for this step is eight milliliters. Transfer the solution in the graduated cylinder to cup two. Use the glass stirring rod to mix the solution thoroughly. Use scissors to snip a rubber band in one place. Repeat for a second rubber band. Remove the dialysis tubing from the water in cup one. Set cup one aside with the water still inside it for later use. Fold the dialysis tubing about one and a half centimeters from the end. Tie one of the snipped rubber bands around the folded end of the tubing, creating a seal. Open the unsealed end of the dialysis tubing. Carefully rub the tubing between your fingers until the middle of the tubing opens. Use the pipette labeled DW to add a small amount of distilled water to the dialysis tubing. If the tube leaks, tighten the knot in the rubber band and repeat the test. Discard the distilled water used to test the dialysis tubing. Place a funnel in the open end of the dialysis tubing. While holding the dialysis tubing around the funnel, slowly pour the glucose starch solution from cup two into the funnel. Use your fingers to press any air from the top of the dialysis tubing. Fold the end of the tubing and tie the end closed with the rubber band. Ensure that there are no leaks from the dialysis tubing. Rinse the outside of the dialysis tubing with distilled water in case any portion of the glucose starch solution was spilled during the sealing. Set the dialysis tube aside on a paper towel. Observe the solution in the dialysis tubing and record your findings under initial observations in data table three. Be as precise as possible when making observations. Good observations include terms like opaque, clear, and colorless. Use the long stem graduated pipette to slowly add 20 drops of IKI solution to the distilled water in cup one. Use the glass stirring rod to mix the solution. Record the color of the contents in cup one in data table three under initial observations. IKI indicator is used to test for the presence of starch. When IKI indicator comes in contact with starch, it turns a dark blue black color. You will investigate color changes to determine the location of starch inside the dialysis tube in the cup one solution or both. Place the dialysis tubing containing the glucose starch solution in cup one, which contains the IKI solution. 
Allow the dialysis tubing to sit in the cup for one hour. Wash cup two with dish soap and water and dry with paper towels. When one hour has passed, record the color of the solution in the cup and the color of the solution in the dialysis tubing in data table three under final observations. Remove the dialysis tubing from the solution in cup one and hold it over cup two. Use scissors to snip the dialysis tubing and transfer the entire contents of the dialysis tubing to cup two. Discard the empty dialysis tubing in a trash bin. Set the solutions in cup one and cup two aside for future steps. Gather three test tubes. Use a felt tip marker to label each test tube one through three. With a ruler, place a mark two centimeters and three centimeters from the bottom of the test tube. The test tubes will be used to test solutions for the presence of sugars using Benedict's reagent. To test tube one, use a clean short stem pipette to add the solution in cup one to the two centimeter mark of the test tube. Discard the pipette in a trash bin. To test tube two, use a clean short stem pipette to add the solution from cup two, the dialysis tubing contents, to the two centimeter mark of the test tube. Discard the pipette in a trash bin. To test tube three, use the short stem pipette labeled DW to add distilled water to the two centimeter mark of the test tube. Distilled water contains no sugar and will act as a control. Add Benedict's reagent to three centimeter mark of each of the three test tubes. Set the three test tubes aside. An empty cup, beaker, or 24 well plate work well as a test tube holder. Record observations for the solution in each test tube under initial observations in data table four. Create a hot water bath by half filling a 50 milliliter beaker with water that is near boiling. Use a thermometer to ensure that the temperature is at least 90 degrees Celsius. Water may be heated in a saucepan over a hot plate or stove, or water may be heated in the microwave. Handle all hot liquids with care. Place test tubes one through three in the hot water bath. Allow the solutions in the test tubes to incubate for 10 minutes. Benedict's reagent is used to test for the presence of simple sugars, such as glucose. When Benedict's reagent comes into contact with sugar, it changes colors. You will investigate color changes to determine the location of sugar inside the dialysis tube, in the solution outside of the dialysis tubing, or both. After the solutions have incubated, record observations for the solution in each test tube under observations after heating in data table four. Once the experiment is complete, place the dropper bottles of glucose, IKI, and starch back in your kit for possible future use. Rinse the graduated pipette and place in a sealable plastic bag labeled IKI. Carefully pour all mixed solutions down the drain with copious amounts of tap water. Wash all glassware and equipment with dish soap and tap water and dry. Place the pipette and all equipment back in the kit for future use.